Kristen Acheson here, and we're covering Chapter 1, Foundations, and we're going to cover that first section about perceptual processes. So to get started, let's get some definitions out there. Sensation is, the, is that physical stimulation, whereas perception is that interpretation of that sensory information. So typically what we have is we have sensation coming first, um, and that can be any kind of stimulation that we'll talk about here shortly. In this case, we see light and sound waves, and that's what that input, that stimuli, that sensation. What then happens is we have perception. The brain organizes and interprets that information that it got from the senses, in this case, the eyes and the ears, those senses, and it interprets those and, and often initiates a brain response. So sensation, again, um, is this physical features of the environment. So this can be light, this can be sound, this can be pressure, this can be um, any number of different things that we'll cover throughout the semester. And they're sent to the brain for processing. So sensation is really happening on a very basic level. Um, and it's happening in, um, in the sensory receptors themselves. So the eyes, the ears, um, the skin, things like that. And the senses are those physiological functions that we have. And again, that can be sight. Um, that can be any number of things, such as audition. Um, we'll talk about balance and body movement, all these different things. Um, and these convert those environmental features so that information we're getting from the environment into signals that our brains can understand through electrochemical signals. And so again, what's happening here with those senses is we're taking that information from our environment and putting it into a format that the brain can understand. There are more than our, the five senses that we learned in elementary school. Um, so look at table 1-1, um, one, one, it's on page 6. Um, it lists all the different human senses, uh, and it also talks about which chapter we're going to discuss them. So that's a nice little overview for you to look through um, so you kind of see where we're going to go. Perception is that next step um, in this process, and it really involves that representation that the brain comes up with of that information that it got. So that representation of objects and events so that we can identify them, so that we can store them, so that we can think about them, so that we can pay attention to them. Um, all of those kinds of higher order cognition, um, we need these perceptions um, to understand. And these higher order cognitions are usually these representations. It's the information in the mind and the brain used to identify objects and events, to store them, and to use them. So let's go over some basic principles of sensation. Um, our sensory receptors, again, that can be any number of different um, sensory receptors depending on um, what part, which sense we're talking about. So in the case of vision or sight, um, we have photoreceptors in the eye um, that allow us to detect that stimulation. In the case of audition, um, we have cilia in our inner ear and the cochlea um, that, that convert that information for us um, into um, a neuro, um, a electrochemical signal um, or a neural signal. This happens through a process called transduction. Um, and again, this is where we're taking that information that light that's hitting the photoreceptors. We're taking that vibration on the cilia on the inner ear um, and it's transducing that information into neural signals. That's where the, the conversion between the outside world and our brain's understanding of it is happening in this process of transduction through our sensory receptors. So there's different kind of stimuli that we can um, encounter in the world. Um, and your book talks about them in two different ways. So stimuli are just those, any of those objects or events um, that we can perceive. So anything um, that can stimulate us, anything that will activate um, these receptors can be stimulus. There's two different kinds that we're going to talk about in your book. The first of which is distal stimulus. And this is that perceived object or event in the world. In the case of this image here that's in your book, um, your opponent or you, um, the, the ball, the racket, um, those are all um, distal stimulus. Whereas the proximal stimulus um, is the phenomenon evoked by that distal st stimulus. So holding the tennis racket in your hand, the tennis racket is more of a distal stimulus. But the sensation, that pressure of the racket on your hand is a proximal stimulus. The sun shining overhead is a distal stimulus. 
but the light that's hitting your eyes is a proximal stimulus. The sound of the tennis ball hitting the racket is a distal stimulus. When it goes into your ears, it becomes a proximal stimulus. So the event of that ball hitting is the distal stimulus. The sound that it makes is the proximal stimulus. And that can be a little confusing. So your book was helpful and kind of gave us a mnemonic to help figure these two things out. So distal sounds like distant. Um, so again, those are stimuli that are out in the world. So again, your friend, your computer, um, any your drink that you have, those are all distal stimuli. Whereas the proximal stimuli, which again sounds like proximate, which means near, is that stimulus pattern um, that, that hits the receptors. So when you take a sip of your drink, the flavor um, in there, when it hits your um, tongue, that's going to be um, those taste receptors in your mouth or those molecules from your beverage are going to be that proximal stimulus. Whereas your drink sitting there on your desk is a distal stimulus. Once that hits your sensory receptors, that becomes a proximal stimulus. So again, this is just a kind of a way to think about remembering the distant, the difference between distal and proximal stimulus. And we'll talk about this kind of ongoing throughout the semester. So this is just kind of laying a foundation, hence the title of the chapter, um, for the things that we're going to discuss throughout the semester. So let's go over some basic perception um, principles. Um, there's two different ways that we think about perception happening. Um, and they all involve uh, sensation perception, the attention, memory, and thinking, and action. Um, all of these are involved in them. It's just the difference is whether they're going from the bottom up, which is called easily enough, bottom-up information or bottom-up processing. Um, and this is information that goes from the sensory receptors to um, perception. So this is what we were just talking about, where we have the input is coming in through those sensory receptors, and we have to figure out what that is. So maybe like a blind taste test it was going to be a little bit more like a bottom-up processing. You don't know what you're tasting. Um, you don't know what it is. All you have to do is take that information and perceive it. Whereas the difference is, is top-down processing. Top-down processing is if you say ahead of time, oh, I know that I, I prefer the taste of Coke to Pepsi. Um, again, in our blind taste test scenario, then when you taste a Coke, you're going to think that it's going to taste better because of your top-down information. Where, because of your expectations and your knowledge, where in a bottom-up processing, which is what they're trying to do in a blind taste test, um, we're trying to get that sensory receptor um, to, to have that information to the brain instead of the brain saying, oh, no, 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 I don't like this or I do like this because of what my expectations are. This idea of top-down information was first talked about by, by von Helmholtz in 1886. So it's very um, a well-established and well-known idea of how the different kinds of processing are. And we talk about top-down information and bottom-up information in a lot of different areas in psychology, not just perception. So top-down processing also helps us explain optical illusions. Um, so when you're a mind is being tricked in some way. Um, this is because of your what you expect to see, what you think you know about that event, about that stimulus that you're looking at. Um, that's caused by top-down processing. So again, the same information is happening here. In bottom-up processing, we have it built from the bottom up, okay? So everything is built on top of those sensations, on top of those senses. We're in top down processing, think of it as head to toe. It's the, the information is coming from our heads first. I already think that I like this. I already think that I don't like this. I already have this expectation about this. And so this is what I expect to see. This is what I expect to taste. This is what I expect to hear, et cetera, et cetera. So again, what you expect to see or what you're used to seeing influences this. So again, illusions really are explained by this top-down processing of information. What you expect to see or what you're used to seeing tricks your brain and you perceive things differently than they actually appear. So what I want you to do now is I want you to go to the link um, that's listed here but is also available on Canvas and watch this little explanation of top-down of optical illusions and think about how top-down processing is involved in those explanations. Thanks and I'll see you in the next video.